Hello and welcome to JSB Talks Digital, the podcast for marketers, small business owners and those of you bringing your skills into the digital age. I'm Joanne Sweeney-Burke and I am the founder and CEO of Digital Training Institute. Coming up in today's show, Snapchat rolls out Snap ads between stories and moves discover. Facebook releases suicide prevention feature worldwide. Microsoft acquires LinkedIn for $2.6 billion. I speak to Samantha Kelly, aka the Tweeting Goddess, about her rise to Twitter influencer status and her social media events. My featured column, the SEO conundrum. How do you explain SEO to clients? And the social media tool that saved my working week. Social Media News. Mark Schaefer, author of The Content Code, says, Platforms move slowly, strategies move quickly. This is a great nugget of advice if you sit back and think about it. Marketers are in a headspin with almost daily social network updates, and they are dazed trying to keep up. However, let's think about Mark's statement. Software developers undertake massive amounts of work to make one simple change to a social network's features. So when they do, we should be able to iterate and change our social marketing strategy to suit. As well as introducing ads within Snapchat Stories, Snapchat have also moved Discover to our Snapchat Stories newsfeed. Clearly, they're attempting to get us to consume more branded content. So after this move, I... JSB Snaps, now find myself competing for attention against Cosmopolitan, BuzzFeed, National Geographic, Mashable, Sky News, etc, etc. So, taking Mark Schaefer's advice on board, I changed my Snapchat strategy in reaction to the Discover feature move. What did I do? Well, I consciously upped the ante on my Snapchat stories. More JSB videos, more visibility of JSB on the move, more JSB behind the scenes, more JSB exclusives and more JSB news. The result, a 5% increase in my Snapchat story views in one week. You see, I reacted to the platform change. Nothing major, but I reacted and I will remain this stance. Remember, as Mark says, platforms move slowly, strategies should move quickly. So whenever you hear of a social network iteration or update, you must change your strategy because you can, because you are flexible enough to do it. Now, back to ads in our Snapchat stories. Imran Khan, Chief Strategy Officer with Snapchat says, we want brands to have a place where they can tell their stories in a better way. So, Snapchat bosses have forged a deal with Moat to provide an ad performance score to advertisers, which was really missing from the platform. They were asking, how do you measure return on investment on Snapchat ads? So, the new Snapchat Moat metric generates a quality score from 0 to 100 by calculating screen, real estate and time exposed to video and audio. For now, the score is meant to guide advertisers as they weigh a campaign's effectiveness. But Clement Q, who is head of revenue operations at Snapchat, says it may become Snapchat's currency, the system that determines how advertisers pay for Snapchat impressions. Remember, in the digital age, we are prosumers, we're not consumers. We will not be dictated to. So tell me a story, don't sell to me. Nice move, Snapchat. On the same week that I completed a suicide intervention training program, Facebook released its suicide prevention feature worldwide. This is a great move by Mark Zuckerberg and his team, and one that is hugely needed. I learned that in Ireland, around 450 people per year die by suicide, with 15% of that number suffering from depression. Many more die by suicide in reaction to a life event, a trigger, alcohol or substance abuse or other factors. The point being, we all need to be aware of suicide prevention 
as one in 20 people worldwide right now are having thoughts of suicide. So Facebook's feature encourages you to reach out to a friend if you've noticed they're having a hard time through what they are posting online. Facebook has made it easier than ever to gently reach out. Users can flag a post the same way you'd flag something as being inappropriate, except this time. You can report that you're worried about self-harm or suicide. Facebook then gives the option to send a message or anonymously share resources. As I learned in the Safe Talk course, intervention is vital to prevent deaths by suicide. So well done, Facebook. Microsoft has acquired LinkedIn for $2.6 billion and we are all wondering, so what's next for the professional networking platform? Well, some people have their own ideas of what might happen and Snapchat influencer Carlos Gill says, Microsoft's acquisition of LinkedIn is one that makes sense for both sides as I'm sure the plan is to integrate LinkedIn's user data of over 400 million professionals globally seamlessly into Microsoft's suite of products such as Outlook and Skype. Carlos predicts that we'll likely see Twitter being acquired by either Google or IBM not before long. Interesting. So let's wait and see what LinkedIn and Microsoft's next social media move is. Interview. In today's show, I'm joined by Samantha Kelly, also known as the Tweeting Goddess. Samantha is a Twitter influencer, an author, speaker, trainer, and creator of Social Media Summit Ireland and Women's Inspired Network. She has, in her own words, worked her way from her kitchen table to 33,000 Twitter followers to influence and to inspire. Samantha, you are very welcome to JSB Talks Digital. Thank you so much for joining me, although it feels like we speak every day because I see you on Facebook, Twitter, Blab, you're everywhere. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. Thanks for It's my pleasure to be here. And yes, um, we are always on <laughs> social media. <laughs> but um, do you know what? A lot of people actually say sometimes, oh, you know, wasting your time on social media. That's not true at all. It's all about relationships. And that's how we've built up such a good relationship as well. Absolutely. So social media is your business. You're a trainer, a speaker. You organize social media events. You're a coach. Tell us how you got into this business. Well, about five years ago, um, I was a lone parent on social welfare and my, um, I had to get a first period kind of starter set for uh, one of my girls who had just came to that awkward milestone. So I kind of went to the shop looking for one and there was none there. So I decided, you know what, I'll do it. And um, it was actually at a really kind of crucial stage in my life. I just turned 40. Uh, my father had just passed away, who was a huge influence on me, and I was devastated, and my marriage had just broken up. So there was a lot of stuff going on for me. So I was kind of in a vulnerable place, but at the same time, I was in a place where, you know, that kind of way when you think, you know what, you only live once. So I decided to go for it. And from there, um, with that business, which was called Funky Goddess, like I hadn't got a penny either, by the way, but I just, you know, I just started promoting it on social media and marketing it because I had no marketing budget. And I started utilizing the tools that were there um, that I could use for free. And it turned out that I became a natural on Twitter, especially. And I just it just grew from there. And, and, and then I, I sold the business. Um, and in the end, I, I decided, you know what, this is where I, I rock at. And so I decided to carry on doing um, Twitter and teaching other businesses how to use it. And one of the things that I'm totally impressed by you, apart from your 33,000 followers, uh, Jealous.com, but <laughs> you've been able to secure high-profile international speakers for events. You've yeah. successfully run crowdfunding campaign, campaigns, and you've also appeared on TV. How have you done this? Just from building relationships on Twitter. And that is the truth. Twitter has changed my whole life. Um, it's just from, like, if I see somebody I think is interesting and I start talking to them, um, I start sharing their content, and then I also write a lot of uh, blog posts myself about my experiences. And I think people identify with me as well. Um, a lot of people would identify with my journey because I suppose I, I, I'm honest and I just say what it's like because it's not easy running the business. It's not easy, especially as a woman, uh, juggling everything and, you know, when do we look after ourselves, all that kind of stuff. And I suppose I just want to 
help others in the same situation by sharing my experience. And I think that's the secret. I think when you're authentic and when you share your experiences and pe- other people identify with you, like even leaders and even these international speakers, they're all human beings, you know. So if you start um, talking to them and they read one of your blog posts, which they will eventually, <clears throat> you know, they will actually go, do you know what, I really like this. And then they'll start talking to you. And next thing, they're coming over to speak in Ireland. <laughs> and I know women in business is one of your particular interests. And you yeah. set up the Women's Inspire Network. I did. I, I, I just found that there was a lack of support um, out there just, you know, just to bounce ideas off each other. I, I went to a few networking events when I started out, and to be honest, Joanne, I wasn't mad about them. Um, I felt a little bit um, out of my comfort zone. First of all, I didn't have the right clothes. I didn't have the right lingo. Um, I just felt a little bit out of place. Now, that was my own stuff going on, but at the same time, there were people there that knew I was new, and I remember we were at a two-day event, and I sat having my breakfast on my own. I didn't know anyone. And the lady from my local area who knew I was a startup and didn't know anyone was sitting with seven other women and never even invited me over to join them. And I said, you know what, I am never going to let anyone feel like this left out. So that's why I like to include people. And if there's people that are new at my events, I always ask who's here on their own and ask them, do they want to say what they do? And it's just I try and connect people with the people that I think could help them. You know, um, and it could be someone that I know has a similar story to someone else. You know, I'm often connecting women with each other that I know have a similar story, and they end up being friends, and it's mad to see these relationships building. And it all comes down to, at the end of the day, you can help each other get sales, and people buy from people. So if people like you, they will buy from you. Now, talking about events, you've got a, a big Women's Inspire Network event in October, and a Twitter bird tells me that... Um, Something about a global event, perhaps? <laughs> um, well, you never know. Um, we have actually, um, we secured Anna Scheller, who's a sales queen in the US, and she's going to come over. She always wants to go to Ireland, and that's purely from building up a relationship with Anna on Twitter and Blab and Periscope. I, I just ended up, she said, oh, I'd love to go to Ireland. I said, well, why don't we just get you over to speak, you know? So she's coming over. We have... Um, a few people coming from the UK as well. I mean, this is going to be a national event, but there are people that will come from abroad as well to, to, to attend this event. There's no reason why we can't do a big one in the UK as well. And give me three Twitter tips for anybody hoping to reach Samantha's 33,000 follower level on Twitter. The first thing I would say is make sure your bio is appealing and it has all the information in there. Make it as easy as possible for people to connect and contact you. Um, assist others um, and put out good content. So put out tips that you think your audience might want to hear. Samantha, thanks a million as always. And can I tell you that Samantha has connected me to so many great people that are, are my friends that we've done business with, not to mention them. Um, she's a great friend of my own. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to find out more about Samantha, firstly, follow her on Twitter at Tweeting Goddess. Log on to her website, TweetingGoddess.com. And if you're a, a woman in business, you might want to join Women's Inspire Network Facebook group. Shout outs. In this part of the show, I give shout outs to those who are remarkable online and worth talking about. My first shout out is to SEO Monitor, who came away with silverware from the European Search Awards 2016. They scooped Best Innovation Software Award. This SEO software company is disrupting search marketing as we know it. And I absolutely love their product and use it in my business. And I'll tell you why. You know that not provided data in your Google Analytics report? Well, the developers at SEO Monitor have created their own algorithm to show us that previously undiscovered data. Brilliant. You can also segment brand and non-brand keywords. SEO Monitor has an inbuilt business case builder feature, which helps marketers forecast non-brand organic traffic and track progress. And it has a powerful local SEO capability so marketers can find out the search volumes and the rankings for local search results. My next shout out is for an event dedicated to Snapchat, which is taking place in London later this year. It's called 
Snap Happen and it's aimed at Snapchat influencers, marketers and fans and it's taking place on September 22nd. Snap Happen is described as the world's first Snapchat event and awards ceremony run by the community for the community. So it's an opportunity to meet the snappers whose stories we see every day and learn firsthand how to increase engagements and storytelling. That evening, the Ghosties take place, the first ever Snapchat specific awards honouring the best storytellers, artists, comics and vloggers to grace the app. It's being held at the Magic Roundabout in Islington and organisers say they have a packed day full of engaging speakers and fun events planned. So if you're interested in going along, find out more at snaphappen.com. GSB's column. Today's column, the SEO conundrum. How do you explain SEO to clients? Search engine optimization, or SEO for short, can be the bane of digital marketers' lives. How do you explain SEO in simple terms to your client, and how can you convince them to invest in it? SEO is one of the more complex tasks for a digital marketer, and that's why we have SEO and search marketing specialists. Recently, I was explaining the concept of SEO to a client, and I thought it would be useful to share my know-how with you. So, here's my approach. Firstly, explain the basics. Don't assume your client understands terms like search results, search engines, backlinks, on-page SEO. So start at the start. I usually explain how Google works, how it matches searches with results. Secondly, design a graphic to show the journey of keywords and visitors to Google. Most people retain information better with visual storytelling. Thirdly, explain what SEO does for the client using simple phrases such as SEO helps your website appear on the first few pages of the search results. SEO helps your website appear sooner when someone searches for keywords relating to your business. And or SEO makes it easier for people to find your business and your website. Fourthly, before meeting a client, make sure you familiarise yourself with your client's website. Knowing what your client does and what his or her website is about may come in handy for you when you have to use analogies, comparisons or particular scenarios. Be sure to do a search for keywords relating to your client's business and search them on Google with him or her. They will then realise how important SEO is. Finally, Explain all the SEO tactics you are going to employ to improve the SEO health of your client's business, such as audit their website for broken links, undertake keyword research to influence your content marketing strategy, make mobile a priority in your marketing tactics, and link to quality outbound links. So there are my tips. Let me know how you get on, because the SEO conundrum, you can explain SEO to clients. Social media of the week. Software as a service is a vital part of my business. I use technology to make my business more efficient, more accountable, and it helps me scale. The same is true of your social media and digital marketing activities. Tools are a vital component. So the tool that saved my working week is Canva. Graphic design is an essential element of social media marketing. We need visuals for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest and our blog posts, not to mention creating presentations for clients or prospects. Canva is a graphic design tool for non-graphic designers and everyone I teach this tool to absolutely loves it. Canva really offers a variety of content types from pre-sized social media image and header templates to marketing materials, documents, presentations, invitations and ads. You'll find almost everything you need. But if you don't, you can always create a custom project. Canva for Work was released in 2015 and it's the premium version of its DIY design platform. It costs $12.95 per month so it is affordable for small business owners or solopreneurs. 
It saved my working week because I wanted to quickly create a featured blog image for my latest blog post. And I was able to customize the dimensions to match my WordPress blog. If you haven't tried Canva, log on to canva.com. And if you are already a user, check out Canva for work at canva.com forward slash work. Remember, a picture tells a thousand words. If you want to learn more about what I've discussed in this episode, log on to digitaltraining.ie and click on podcasts. I'll have links to all of today's stories right there. If you want to learn more from me, please join my webinar community at bigmarker.com forward slash digital training institute. You can register for my free monthly webinars on a range of social media and digital marketing topics right there. Don't forget to connect with me on Twitter at Tweets by JSB and add me on Snapchat. I'm JSB Snaps. I'm Joanne Sweeney-Burke. Thank you so much for listening.